What's up? Welcome back to Tales Tomorrow. I am Maro, and today I got some more RPG horror stories for us to cover. Uh, by the way, if any of y'all want to uh, interact or leave feedback or your own thoughts in the comment section, I'll be more than happy to read it. Uh, this whole thing is brand new for me, but, you know, as we get to know each other and acclimate to this whole thing, I think it's going to go, um, it would be pretty fun to see your thoughts on it. 40-year-old OSR guys bully an actual child. When I was about 8 or 10 years old, my mom begged my dad to let me play D&D 3.5e with his regular group. I was never told how to play. They just gave me a rogue character sheet and sat me at the table. I was in way over my head, but I was having a good time, even though I didn't know what I was doing. What I didn't know until years later was that the other players said I was ruining the game. I don't blame them for that, to be honest. I literally did not know what I was doing. I'm sure this story would be very different from their perspective. So, I think it was one of the third session. I got up to use the bathroom. When I came back, the DM said that my character had triggered a trap and died. I asked if there was anything anyone could do. One of the characters cast Animate Dead on me. And my character rose up as a zombie that I was allowed to control. They said I had to follow the orders and that zombies can't talk. That means I couldn't do anything except roll dice in combat. And everyone laughed at me. As a child being bullied by five 40-year-old men at a stranger's house, I started crying because I didn't know how my character died and obviously I didn't want him to be a zombie. If you're gonna tell me that one of those bastards killed a kid's character because they didn't like him there, that's... that's messed up. And then to not only resurrect the character, to turn him into a zombie and make it so the character is basically a, a mime, a puppet, and the kid can only attack his the character, can't talk. If you don't want the kid there, you just let the DM, hey, I really wouldn't want the kid here. Do we not have the kid for the next game? Instead of, you know, bullying. And a uh, shame on the DM as well for just allowing that to happen. Everything here reads like it was a really mean-spirited prank, you know? I don't know. I don't like it. Anyway, my dad told me to calm down and the other guys started teasing me. Just being straight up mean. My dad sat there and stared at me as his friends called me names and made snarky comments which made me cry more, which made my dad take me outside and tell me to calm down or he'd call my mom to pick me up. How come the father just let this happen? Seriously, if I had a kid, right, and God forbid I don't because I'd be a horrible father, I mean, look at me. But still, if it's your kid's first time playing D&D, you ease them into it. You teach them about the hobby so then your kid can learn to love the hobby instead of resent it. This is a great way to teach the kid, hey, just don't play D&D. You're going to run into assholes. They're going to try to kill your character just because. I mean, with some of these RPG horror stories, we do get some bad guys that are trying to ruin the stories and everything. But I mean, this is like horrible. This is terrible. My zombified character character survived two combat encounters and died during a boss fight against kobolds. The guys told me there was nothing they could do, because zombies can be resurrected again. And so, I sat at the table for several hours, not allowed to do anything but watch. After that session, I was not invited back. To this day, my dad has never talked to me about it, and only found out how the other players felt from my mom over a decade later. I fully acknowledged that I was most likely annoying and ruining the game for these OSR guys. But I wish my dad had talked to me and taught me to play the game instead of finding a creative way to make it so that I couldn't speak. He gave me a ticking clock before I was out of the game. Okay, legit, like if let's say hypothetically it was a kid and it was making other players irate because of bad behavior or not following the mechanics or what have you, simply just be like, listen man, your kid is cool and all, but we just want to play D&D without the kid, okay? That's it. You, all you had to do was just straight up just tell the dad, Hey man, maybe you can have the kid come off to a different session or something like that, not for this specific session, right? Otherwise, it just, it's mean-spirited, it's terrible, it's awful. A lot of hard feelings could have been avoided if they could have just agreed to not have the kid there and just do the session like regular. But instead, they decided to be dickheads. You know what? Screw those guys. And screw anybody that does that. That's terrible. Am I justified in being pissed off for how my character died last night? I, 24 female, have been playing in a campaign with a group of college friends and my boyfriend, the DM, for 5 years. 
We've seen a lot of people come and go and had our fair share of ups and downs. But throughout it all, I've always been sure to show up consistently and put a lot of effort into role playing, planning and overall just interacting with the world my boyfriend has built for us. He is otherwise an amazing and engaging DM, which was made what happened last night more frustrating. A party has been enlisted to deal with an adult black dragon terrorizing the outskirts of a local village, which we gladly accepted. Upon reaching the swamps and finding the dragon currently patrolling the outskirts, we quickly realized that something was off when the dragon appeared to be uninterested in engaging in combat with us and didn't seem to recognize the deeds we accused it of doing. After a short-lived combat in which the dragon mostly attempted to ward us off with minions while it flew away from us, we were in fact able to bring it down, upon which another dragon, a Draculich we had previously encountered a multitude of times before, appeared from the growth hissing in anger. Apparently our chronic Draculage friend was hoping the black dragon would take us out before it would do the same in order to claim the dragon's territory and upon realizing this wasn't the case, cursed us out before flying away and leaving the remaining minions to deal with us before we took them all out. Now initially things went fine and were pretty amusing. A ranger of all people was able to revivify the black dragon to shock and horror of my necromancer PC and convince it to temporarily aid us in fighting the Draculage due to a common enemy. After some persuasion, it agreed, took us back to its lair, where the Draculage had begun to make itself comfortable. Dragon Bowl occurred with the two dragons duking it out, while alternating between throwing our help in when we could, while also dealing with the number of animated breath elementals the Draculage summoned. It was a grueling but fun combat, with a number of us brought unconscious a number of times and close to death. In the end, the Draculage was dealt with, leaving us final warning that he'd be back eventually as the light faded from his skeletal eyes. Now, here's where it gets rough. Another one of our PCs, a Drow Paladin, was determined to deal with the Black Dragon next. Never mind the fact that the majority of us were below half health, or even in the single digits, and are almost entirely out of spell slots, he insisted that we needed to deal with the Dragon before it could fully heal and threaten the townspeople again. My PC, who is romantically involved with him, tends to be the one to calm his mood, try to reason with him by saying that we were in no position to fight and that we could always come back later with reinforcements to the dragon's lair, while the other party members chimed in with their own reasons, in and out of character, as to why we weren't in a state to fight again. If your party members are asking you not to do this, probably best idea not to do this and actually listen to them, especially if majority of your party, right? If this was like a 50-50 split decision where people weren't really sure, that'd be one story, right? It's whatever. But if the rest of your party is asking you not to do something, don't do that. Just don't. Listen to your party. Think about it for a little bit or step away for a bit and realize that maybe it's best to come back after recuperating with some extra force or something, anything. Heck, you could even leave the dragon there and have it be as your ally. I don't know. Well, let's see how this goes. The paladin proceeded to ignore all of us and bluntly stated, I attacked the dragon, sending us into another round of initiatives. Almost all of us saved the paladin and our ranger who managed to get into the black dragon's good graces and was at least kept alive at 1 HP are down. Still, the paladin and his player focus on 1v1ing the dragon leading to at least 20 minutes of us just sitting there, getting to do nothing, as he has his main character moment. Eventually, the black dragon flies away from him and coils around me and another player's character, threatening the paladin to give up before he kills us both. You know, his traveling companions and his romantic interest. Without any concern for us, the paladin then responds by aiming a crossbow at him and firing at the dragon's scales, rolling low and missing entirely. Your party members are being corralled by the dragon, and the dragon is saying, he's giving you an ultimatum. Leave, or I'm gonna kill him. And what does the paladin do? It decides to continue fighting the dragon. This paladin doesn't think, does he? Or he's probably having a, like a, riding off the high of like, oh my god, I have to do this. Righteous good. I hope this is not one of those like, lawfully stupid paladin stories, but it kind of seems like it might be. I don't know. I don't know what the paladin's thinking. Well, with that, the dragon rips my character's head clean off her body. I don't get a chance to have any final words or thoughts. I am simply beheaded. Something that a Ribify cannot help with. My compatriots follow shortly afterwards, though she is only stabbed through the chest rather than having her head ripped off. Eventually, the paladin also goes unconscious and the dragon flies out of its lair and into the night. 
With four out of five of our party unconscious or dead, the ranger gets to work stabilizing the paladin, while also casting sending to inform one of our core NPCs, a higher level cleric we've befriended, of the carnage and asking them to send aid as soon as possible. Eventually, this cleric comes by and is able to revivify my companion. But well, seeing as my head has been torn clean off my shoulders, there's nothing that can be done for me. At this point, I am livid and genuinely upset. Perhaps I was taken a bit too serious, but this is a character I played for five years and I got incredibly attached to. Oh, five years. Dude, just because the paladin pulled it dumb. That is actually tragic, I'm sorry. For her to die due to another character's impulsivity with no voice or chance to even announce how I'd like to die was incredibly disheartening. Especially as I had an idea of how such a thing could play out if it did happen, with my necromancer character having a deep inert fear of death that spurred her into her studies. But I wasn't even granted the ability to roleplay my own death with agency. I was furious at my paladin friend for his selfishness, but also at my boyfriend, who could have stopped this at any time but decided to keep fueling the fire. I DM'd him separately expressing my upset, and while he consoled by saying he was sorry that this had to happen and that the party would eventually find a way to fix me, he had to teach the other player character the consequence of rash and impulsive decisions. Which only made me more mad, because why did me and the other player have to die because of another character's f up? It only got worse when I requested we end the session early, and I attempted to make my grievance known with the paladin, who left the call shortly afterwards, and, according to another friend who was acting as a neutral party, texted to say he felt like he was being targeted for his decision, that he wasn't going to apologize for neutralizing a clearly evil threat, even though the dragon still got away with nothing to show for his effort but a near TPK. Okay, yeah, lawful stupid has to be lawful stupid i don't know why else would you choose to keep going and keep fighting for 20 minutes mind you they had a brawl for about 20 minutes and then the dragon was like listen i kill your friends or you let me go and the paladin was like i shall smite you evil dragon i will not allow my compatriots or my romantic companion uh to be, to get in the way of my ultimate goal and the dragon went fine <laughs> And killed him. Now, that's pretty mean for the DM to use the player here, the necromancer, as like uh, an example, right? An example of what would happen. It's great that the DM confirmed the fact that like he has a plan to get the necromancer back, but it's really shitty to not check ahead of time with the player be like, hey, listen, I want to do something drastic to make this paladin think otherwise. Unfortunately, the only way I can think of is by doing something to a character. Don't have to specify, right? You don't have to say like what you're gonna do. Say, do I have permission? It will will be reversed later. Give a player like at least a heads up that hey, I'm about to pull a stunt. It seems like this might be actually a problem, a common problem with the paladin. And the DM decided, okay, now was the time, and right now, I'm gonna go ahead and teach the paladin a lesson. Maybe, I don't know. This could be a lot going on in the background that I wouldn't know. But do I think it's unfair to do that to the necromancer and to the other player as well? Yeah, how, hey, how about you just don't decapitate the necromancer? How about that? I mean, yeah, I get it. Romantic interest, romantic stuff and everything, you know, romantic companions and all that should mean more and stuff. Do the same thing you do with the other one. Stab them through the heart again or bite them super hard. I don't know. Anyway. I left the call to cool down after stating that I wanted to talk about this further with everyone at a later date. My boyfriend had texted me since, then apologized and asking if he could talk privately, while the paladin has said nothing to me, but posted in our group chat that he would also like to talk soon in order to say his piece. I haven't responded to either. I'm extremely bummed out and not quite sure where to go from here. I don't want to make a new character after so many years of roleplaying my necromancer, but also don't want to roleplay and solidify the actions of what happened here tonight. I also don't know if I wanted to leave the campaign just yet, saving that decision for how our next group conversation goes. Any advice or words of support anyone has for me would be much appreciated at the moment. And you know, a lot of people actually offered a lot of advice and responses. There's actually a part two, an update to this story. Let's get to that right now. I'm really happy to say our group talk went well after all of us having time enough to cool down and consider each other's perspectives we skyped in and i calmly laid out how the prior session had made me feel helped by a lot of your comments which articulated my feelings and arguments in a more concise way than i could have provided at the moment both my boyfriend dm and the paladin were incredibly receptive and listened to my grievances with a lot of understanding 
with the paladin even apologizing for his behavior and saying he realized that he got caught up in the moment and failed to consider his fellow party members' feelings, and that he left the call initially because he wanted to cool down and not make the situation worse in a moment. I also owed the paladin an apology for angrily calling him an idiot in the moment, which I provided and he accepted pretty gracefully. While we ultimately decided a retcon or rewind back to the moment where the Draculich fell would be the best action in order to avoid any hard feelings, going forward we all collectively decided to utilize a timeout and talk button if you feel things are starting to go south, or one party member is beginning to cause issues in or out of game. Furthermore, my boyfriend stated that while he wanted to make sure the campaign still had its moments or tenseness and stakes, and there would inevitably be moments similar to this where party members could and would die, he would ensure that no party member was being unfairly punished or targeted, especially for another's actions. Everyone was really mature about the whole affair, and after laying everything out on a table, we agreed to pick up where we left off next Sunday and party ways feeling a lot better. Well, I could definitely say it, and a very wholesome. Kudos on the OP, the DM, and the Paladin for coming around. And honestly, I gotta say, at this point, kind of feel really bad for calling the Paladin uh, lawful, stupid, or whatever I called them. Paladin seemed like they uh, went ahead and turned their uh, opinion around and were able to properly listen into the issues. And honestly, really good credit for getting people to solve issues out of game instead of in game and having a bit of this kind of like a understanding about where everybody's coming from. This is a horror story turned into a really good moral lesson. I like it. Well done. And with that, we'll go ahead and call the stories right here. I want to thank you very much for watching. And uh, yeah, if you want to leave any sort of feedback, comments down below. Uh, if you like what I do, consider subscribing. And uh, that's about it. I don't have any other pitch. I hope you like the video.